The Legion Go S is a device that's kind of unusual to evaluate. It's sort of a light version of the Legion Go, but like not really. It's a budget device whose value in the world depends on how much it costs when you decide to buy it, whether it's now or later. And does this particular handheld have a place in the world? A special niche that no other handheld can fulfill? Well, let's find out. But if you like this video or any other video I've made, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. And in the meantime, why don't you check out Off the Console? It's a brand new podcast created by me, Gardner Bryant, and Games Revealed, with guest stars occasionally. And while yes, it's on YouTube, it's also available wherever podcasts can be found, like Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Check it out. This is the Windows version of the Legion Go. As of the making of this video, the SteamOS version is not out yet. And I do want to cover it when it's able to be reviewed. And yes, Lenovo sent me this unit. They're not watching this video before or after, and I hope they learn from this video. There aren't too many things in this box. We have the charger itself. The charger is 65 watt. It's not detachable, and the length is kind of short to be honest. Some documentation inside of a cardboard jig that turns into a kickstand for the Legion Go S. And finally, the device itself. In terms of pure ergonomic feel, if I had to compare this to any other device, I would say it's the closest to feeling as good as the Steam Deck. Like the ROG Ally and the Ally X, they feel pretty fine, but they don't feel nearly as good as this or the Steam Deck. And the original Legion Go doesn't feel nearly as good as this. When it comes to non-SteamOS devices, I feel like this is arguably the most comfortable of all of them. And no, it's not just the ergonomics, it's also the controls themselves. The sticks feel pretty nice, I guess. The D-pad feels great, especially since I didn't really like the Legion Go's D-pad. The face buttons feel good as well. They're kind of clicky, but what's really clicky are the bumpers, and some may not like the clickiness of them, but I do. And finally, let's talk about the dual mode triggers. The triggers have two different functions, a standard analog trigger and a sort of hair trigger that lets you turn the triggers into a button. It's great for games that don't really use the analog functionality of the trigger, like FPS and whatnot. The hair trigger functionality does feel nice, but when it comes to the actual analog function itself, I feel like there should be more throw to the triggers. Like, it doesn't feel like it has enough analog range. That's a personal preference of mine, though. There are also two macro buttons in the back, and they feel pretty nice to press. They're easy to press, and they're in a good position for my fingers. Yes, it's a full X input layout, meaning you can play just about any game with controller support, and that's basically every game nowadays. In addition to all of your standard controller buttons, you also have access to two different function buttons, the Legion L and Legion Right buttons, as they're referred to. The button layouts for both of these, as well as the start and select buttons, are in a much better place than they were on the actual Legion Go. And that's because, well, if you recall, the Legion Go didn't put them in a very good spot. They feel nice and tactile. There's also a little trackpad, but the trackpad is nearly useless. Like, it would be much faster if you just used a touchscreen. It doesn't move very far, and you can't exactly click and drag either. And because there's only one button you can click, there's no real way to right-click instantly. To right-click, you have to press and hold down the button until it just right-clicks automatically. Navigating Windows is a huge pain with this trackpad, and let's not even get started with playing games with this. You can't really game with it, period. If you really need to navigate in Windows, just use the touchscreen. It's much better anyways. Aside from the controller, let's talk about the internals of the device itself. This is the first and currently only device that features a Z2 Go APU. It comes with one terabyte SSD and an unusual choice, 32 gigs of DDR5 memory. This in theory means you should be able to allocate more of your dedicated memory to VRAM. And honestly, for the sorts of games you'll want to be playing on this device, I think one terabyte is absolutely fine. And of course, the most important stat of all, Battery. Now, this features a 55 watt hour battery. Yes, a higher battery capacity than the original Legion Go or the Steam Deck OLED. But, here's the thing though. Battery life is not just how much battery you have, it's also the software you have and the hardware you have as well. I would imagine it being on par with the Steam Deck OLED, but honestly, none of this really matters until I do my battery testing. And that will have to be a separate video when it comes. It also has two USB Type-C ports, a headphone jack, and a micro SD card slot. Now, I don't like the fact that both of these USB Type-C ports are on the top when it should be one at the top, one at the bottom, kind of like what we had with the Legion Go. The display is a 1920x1200 display, yes, that's 16x10, and it goes up to 120Hz. 
And get this, this has variable refresh rate. I wish the original Legion Go had variable refresh rate, but I guess it's always a possibility for the Legion Go 2, right? I do have to question the inclusion of a high resolution panel given that not even the RG Alley X can run games consistently at 1080p. But games that can run at a high frame rate at a high resolution really do benefit because they do look great on the screen, even if it isn't OLED. Now let's get to the software, and this is where we have to talk about Windows, the icky icky OS for handhelds. The two biggest reasons why you'd want to use Windows handhelds is for Game Pass, and also for anti-cheat games like Destiny 2 and whatnot. But actual usability still sucks, and Microsoft alluded to making some sort of handheld UI. Something more suitable for controller layout, something that's easily navigable with your controller. But they've yet to do that, and Windows still doesn't really control all that well with the controller. You really are going to rely mostly on your touchscreen. Also included is Legion Space, which is supposed to help out with some of the pain points of Windows. It's also like the most central software. It's a game launcher, but it's also a place to update your drivers. It's also a place to customize your thermals, fan curves, TDP, just general performance settings and all of that stuff. And also part of the software suite is the Legion Overlay, which you can access by pressing Legion R. And I will say, Legion Space has improved quite a bit since I've last used it. To be honest, Legion Space was not very good. But this time around, it's a lot more acceptable. It looks better and it feels more responsive. And the overlay now has handy shortcuts for things like Alt F4 or Alt Enter or a bunch of other Windows shortcuts you may need. So all in all, it is vastly improved, but what I will say is that the game launcher portion is still no real replacement for something like SteamOS. Also, something that's always irked me since the beginning is that Legion Space doesn't have per game configurations. Like, you have the option to change button configurations and also change custom TDPs, all of that stuff. And yes, you can change all of that stuff in the overlay, but the big problem is that there are no per game configurations. You can't say, define a configuration for a game, and then apply it to that game and have it automatically apply when you launch the game through the Legion Space app. Like every time you want to change settings for a game, you have to launch the game and then go into your overlay, change your preset or to a custom TDP, and then change your control layout if you need to, and then also change the resolution and refresh rate as well. As someone that really likes to tweak in specific settings for each game, it's really annoying if you have to do this every single time you switch games. Like honestly, they need to implement a system like this now. Armory Crate for both of the ROG Ally devices have all of these features that I mentioned. And that makes all of the difference when it comes to optimizing performance. It also makes all of the difference when you're trying to optimize for battery life. But battery life is a different story and it does require more extensive testing. And honestly it requires its own separate video. But if I had to give my thoughts on battery life, I will say the battery life is surprisingly decent. But yes, at higher TDPs, the extra battery will burn fast as well. But this really shouldn't be a surprise given that this happens to most laptops and most PC handhelds. So now it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. The thing I kind of avoided talking until the very end of the video. The price. See, the Legion Go S goes for $730 as of the making of this video. It is a very cool device, but at this price, it's far more expensive than some of the other options out there. And you also have to consider the other devices around, like for example, the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck, of course, is $400 MSRP, but the Steam Deck OLED starts at around $500 or so. And yes, even the most expensive Steam Deck OLED is not as expensive as this device, and that comes with an OLED display. It is weaker, yes, and you can't crank up the TDP like you can with the Legion Go S, but honestly, given that this is a portable device, I don't really want to crank up the TDP all the time. And honestly, there are more powerful devices that are even cheaper than this new one. Like for example, the ROG Ally. The original Ally is $650 MSRP now, and it goes on sale fairly frequently, so you can pick it up for even cheaper if so desired. The original Legion Go is a similar story as well. It is more expensive than the original ROG Ally, but it is still cheaper than the Legion Go S, and it's more powerful as well. And it has unique features and a Z1 Extreme processor, and yes, the Z1 Extreme processor is faster than the Z2 Go. And finally, if you spend just $70 more, you can get an ROG app. Yes, this one has a Z1 Extreme, but it also has a massive battery. And the battery life is really freaking good on this device. 
There's a lot going for the Legion Go S, but honestly the biggest issue is the price to performance ratio. There's supposed to be a Z1 Extreme version coming out later, but I don't know if it's going to be cheaper or more expensive because it's an older but more powerful CPU. And on the topic of future devices, the SteamOS version is supposed to be coming out at some point, and that's going to start at a much cheaper price. At $600, it's a very similar device, but it runs SteamOS instead, it has half the memory and also has half the storage as well. At $600, it might be a more compelling option. Though I am curious to see if they have a 32GB SKU for the SteamOS version. But my final verdict is probably wait till the SteamOS version comes out, and I'm gonna be reviewing that. Yeah, I could've just installed SteamOS on this device right now, but I want to review it as it is out of box. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high tech low life with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high tech low life, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.